This portion of the show is brought to you by Timberline Firearms and Training. The Jeff Orbit Show starts now. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for listening. Jeff Orbit's here. Happy to be here with you today. And the ladies are here with me as well, for this hour at least. The ladies. The ladies, Angela and Olivia. Here we are. Hope you had a good Independence Day, and I find myself making sure that I call it Independence Day and not Happy 4th, Happy July 4th, because I have a study here about how many people don't even know what Independence Day is. It's just just like a day off. Yeah. And and maybe you do fireworks. We didn't get to do fireworks. Right. But it's it's kind of like- We heard some- it's kind of like, oh, Christmas. Oh, that's just a tradition. You know, we've had family yeah. members tell us that. It's like, oh, okay. Well, what's it about, though? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what is, yeah. So I think it's more important to, I, 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 I'm not too nitpicky because I, I hate when people are nitpicking on every little thing all the time. But right. I, I find myself at least saying happy Independence Day because you got got a study here that f- only 59% gave the correct answer to what, when asked what the 4th of July officially is commemorating. And that is the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the yeah, remaining what the rest of the 41% percent thought. Yeah, I love 41% got the question wrong. 22% came close choosing the establishment of the United States as an independent nation. Not quite there yet, but on that on that road. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think it's important because I think people just look at this and they don't understand what's yeah, being see, celebrated, so what's weird being commemorated. To me that I, how could you not know that? But I don't know. I, I don't know. Like <laughs> nowadays, the the latest generation or two is a lot out of, more out of touch than I yeah. think the rest of us, yeah. you know, previous yeah. generations realize. So it's important to to understand it. But we had a good four, fourth. There you go. I did. Yeah. It. We had yeah. a good Independence Day. Yeah. Uh, we we weren't able to do the fireworks, although in, in we came back to Flagstaff. There were people launching yeah, we some kept aerial them all over explosions. The place. Luckily, like, dang it, we should. Broad yeah, ours. luckily no, but th- those are straight up uh, totally illegal in yeah. throughout Arizona, oh, yeah. the aerial fireworks and all that. So I hope you all had a good time. Your comments, love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's do this. I've got uh, some Arizona news roundup items I want to hit on. I've got some things on automobiles, including new regulations from the feds. Uh, I've also got some more on electric cars I want to talk about. And this hour, I think we'll have time to hit on this. We did go see the, the most recent Indiana Jones. Remember, we, we think we talked about this on Thursday or Friday show before we took some time off. There was this whole discussion out there that's by a lot of conservative radio show hosts, uh, pundits, et cetera, et cetera, that it was woke. And they all made their analysis based off of like a, a one minute preview yeah the, well, we the saw it so right. we're going to chime in on uh is this a woke movie and I, I really want to point this out because is sometimes when you hear things that are just spread about with little information is it accurate well i yeah. think we'll give an accurate mm-hmm. assessment here in just a couple minutes um news roundup coming up here in just a second brought to you by mammoth restoration uh mammoth restoration offers 24 7 365 day emergency services they'll clean it they'll restore it they'll get it right we're talking about if your home gets flooded if you have fire and you got to do the smoke deodorization fire and soot cleanup they are the pack out and content specialists that'll take care of everything from board ups the roof taping reconstruction services this is a northern arizona company a local company but they are a big company that can handle anything you throw out at them save this number 24/7 365 day services at 877 714 Zero zero five zero. That's Mammoth Restoration at eight seven 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 one four zero zero five zero. Okay, a couple of Arizona items that I want to hit on. First of all, windy out there, hot. Summer has kicked in. Dry. <laughs> so windy that Olivia's sneezing. So dry that I'm she's coughing, sneezing. I'm coughing, not sneezing. Okay, whatever you're doing over there. There's a fire that's creeping. You know, these fires are getting up the mount up up range more let's mm-hmm. say as it continues to dry out and the grass turns browner and browner this one's what by kingman yeah it's the stockton hill fire it's about 13 miles north of kingman and okay. it's burning like 200 acres and that's as of a few hours ago so it's probably with this wind cranking even a lot more yeah no structures have been lost they say but they also say it's zero percent contained yeah yeah so 
and I'm thinking north of Kingman. And- what are we at here? And it's low 90s, upper 80s, or something today in Flagstaff. So north of Kingman, they're probably talking pushing triple digits in yeah. that area. So there's um, not like, I mean, it's it's really really deserty, dry type, high desert type. Yeah, but 10 miles north. Um, you start getting into the those uh, junipers, the scrub brushes, and all that. Yeah, in those areas. So, so that's what's burning. It's mostly I don't brush, know, I guess. but but there's I, I just know from driving through that there's a lot of those just junipers everywhere, pinions yeah. and junipers, and that kind of that it gets more forested than you realize when you get out in some of those hills. Once you get above like forty five hundred feet, five thousand, you know, four thousand foot range, you start hitting those those yeah, small trees. Yeah, I guess I just the have place. the like the yeah. road from Kingman up to Vegas and. You barely see weeds out there. It's so dry. Yeah, that's so I'm true. Trying to imagine hills, what's, what's burning. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe someone. I know we got some listeners over in Kingman. If you you have any insights, love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. Um, got two more here on Arizona issues. Uh, remember the executive order that came out from Hobbs saying that the we're not going to prosecute the abortion issues. The county, she was saying to the county attorneys, "Hey, don't refer this to the state, and then we'll basically we're not going to do anything because Arizona has the 15 week ban on abortions in place." Well, she's basically saying, "Oh, just who cares about the law? This was passed through a legislative process, uh, so she did an executive order." Now, 12 of the state's 15 counties are now asking for the governor to rescind the order that hmm. she came up with, including. Uh, sadly, the one that actually counts when it comes to votes and these politicians paying attention, and that's Maricopa County, uh, where, what, five and a half million people are living. Uh, she's saying re- they are saying to rescind the order. I wonder what the three count. I bet Wait, you it's- Maricopa is, is in on the 12th. Yes. Saying- yes. OK, which yeah. what are the three? That I, are- I couldn't find it, but I, I, I don't even want to guess, but I would guess <laughs> that it's Pima County, Coconino County and, uh, you know, pick another one hmm. that, that yeah. wouldn't get in on that. But I, I could be wrong on that. But that, that's, you know, how it's been in the past. Um, so uh, a spokesperson for Hobbs said that she's not going to rescind it. So she doesn't care. You know, we don't. We don't care what you say. Um, another re- resignation down at the Arizona legislature, which is still in session uh, to the end of this month. I'm hearing from people that I know down there that they're kind of they're staying in this long basically to keep watch because once they leave in July, because they have to leave at the end of July, I believe. Mm-hmm. Once they leave, then they can't do anything if Hobbs does crazy executive orders, this and that. They can't go back into se- – they can't call themselves into session right, down yeah. there at the legislature. Has the, the governor. governor has yeah. to call it, which I believe there is a push in that legislation – That not legislation. There's a statewide initiative that's coming out. We had one of the representatives on. I think it was um, – uh, I can't remember. It was one of them down there. So it's, it's, I'm drawing a blank right now. But w- when you vote in 24, there's an initiative on the ballot – that would allow the legislature to, to basically bring them then bring themselves back to session, but also limit the governor's executive orders on those emergencies. So they're trying to fix that. To automatically expire. Right? Yeah, or they can, or they, have she to has to bring it, it to them yeah. to renew. Like if you had another COVID lockdown or something, they, you yeah. can't keep it going like Ducey did for two and a half years. You yeah. have to renew it and go to the legislature. But in that bill or in that initiative that everyone in Arizona is going to vote on, there is a part of it that says the legislature can call themselves back in, mm. which is probably a good, I don't know. Some, some, I get mixed feelings on these. You know, you, you don't want them in session too long, but you don't want a rogue governor that's... For half the year. Yeah. It's like it, unchecked. Yeah, and doing executive orders and all that. So um, that's going on down there. So House Minority Leader um, Andre Cano... Uh, has resigned, another legislator resigning uh, to go complete graduate studies. There's been like four or five resignations that have happened, which is kind of weird because these are two-year terms. You think people would kind of think this through? Yeah, you just... Like, how much effort does it take to get To get elected, yeah. You spend, what, 12 months? And then you're not going to even... And then you're not going to finish term. You you finish the one term. I mean, since he is the... Um, minority leader, I imagine, probably been there for a while. Yeah, possibly. But still, you run, it's like, oh, all of a sudden, I'm going to go So it's not like, studies. oh, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Like, yeah, no person yeah. knew. <laughs> Sometimes you get someone that gets there for the first term, and they're like, oh, what did I do? Yeah, what, what have I done here? Two more years of this, you know? Or yeah. <laughs> what what have I done? Four years? If it, mm-hmm. You know, the legislature's two years. But anyway, so they'll. what happens when someone resigns or gets booted out of office which also happens usually 
one to two times per year in Arizona, unfortunately. Uh, the local precinct committee of where the person is from, so the Democrat uh, Party in this case, uh, will dis- will pick three people to replace the person, then that gets sent to the county where the person lives, where that person who resigned lives, and then the county board of supervisors decides amongst those three. Uh, one more here in Arizona. Um, somebody else died while hiking the Grand Canyon just the other day, over 100 degrees. Heat exhaustion. Yeah, heat exhaustion. <laughs> happens um, every year. That people don't know how much water they need, or they can't carry enough water. Out of water. Person's yeah. out of water. Mm-hmm. 57 years old, I believe. I don't have the name of the person here. but See, I would never want to hike in there in the summertime. I did never. it. I did it, uh, me and some uh, high school friends and, and my dad did it back in when we, when I was in high school mm-hmm. and we did it twice. I mean, for the first time you're like, okay, you yeah, just don't let's know. Let's not do that again. Yeah, we did it. And it was in, I want to say it was in, I want to say June or so. And it was so hot when we were coming up, like I could, I could feel it. I mm-hmm. mean, it was, we were exhausted. It must've been over a hundred degrees coming back up. And um, didn't really think about any of that. And people do it all the time. I, I guess I pose this question out there because you see a lot of the places in Phoenix, like Camelback Mountain, they shut down or they say, oh, no hiking. Where's the personal responsibility side of this? I mean, there's for this, this one person did die, and that's unfortunate. But there's dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people who are hiking it during this time of heat. And, you know, they're fine. Not saying that something can't go wrong. Do we put up... Does, does the government put up laws and restrictions or policies or whatever from the park service that says, oh, you just can't hike this time because you may overheat, you may die? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think so. Well, there's all kinds of warning signs yeah, when you, you go there. you know it's, this. Oh, it, you know, make sure you have enough water and yeah. going up is not negotiable. You have to come back. You have know. to get back. Yeah. There, I, there's warnings when you go there and hike there. And anyone, I mean, if you're into hiking or anything like that, you should be aware i mean you should have be you be educated about where you're hiking and how much water i need to bring and how much water is available because i know there are spots at least on bright angel where there is water available most of the time but sometimes the pipes break or one of them closes or or maybe you don't make you know? it to that point yeah maybe um, it's too far in between because some of them are a few miles in between water stations yeah so i, I i'd hate this, uh, us to get in a situation though where they just start closing these things oh i know like yeah. they're doing in phoenix that's and, my point is yeah. if there's there's warnings mm-hmm. yeah, and you just should know personal responsibility is common sense exactly and then people will say okay but what about the people that have to go rescue them well i mean sometimes if you do something re- really stupid excuse me do you get charged for the evac for the oh, helicopter i, I, I thought know. they did oh but they, you got the donkeys too. You can take that out. The mules. Yeah, uh, no, it's I pretty thought, expensive. Yeah, though. I don't know. Anyway, your thoughts. Love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. Um, you know, you don't want to wait till a recession becomes official um, to actually make changes to your portfolio. That's that's probably too late. Now, Glenn Leist and his team at WT Wealth Management they know that predictions about what the markets might do are, are often wrong. That's why it's better to prepare than to predict. I've worked with Glenn Leist at WT Wealth Management for quite a few years now, and um, I know he's big on not making emotional decisions. This is not a good strategy. Uh, Glenn wants to help you build a portfolio that fits you and, and your personal situations. Why don't you give him a call? You can get a free complimentary no obligation consultation with Glenn Leist at WT Wealth Management at 928-225-2474. That's Glenn Leist at WT Wealth Management at 928-225-2474. Okay, uh, let's, let's move on here. We were, this is becoming a bigger and bigger thing. And we've hit on it quite a bit here on the show as far as the extra fees that you're all getting charged. I, I think we, we've hit on this almost every week now <laughs> yeah, for the past, I know what you're for talking the past about now. month. Yeah. And, as you're shopping around out there, as you're going to restaurants, as you're buying goods throughout Arizona, probably throughout the nation, I guess this is probably happening more and more. You're noticing that a lot of places, you've got to stop yawning. You, you know, she's going to put us to sleep over here. I'm not. I yawn once. <laughs> she keeps yawning over there. No, I do not. <laughs> anyway, you've um, you, you've noticed the fees, mostly a three percent surcharge. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. You know, so constant. We, over the Fourth of July weekend, we did. Uh, we we were in Camp Verde, and we well, just, we have a funny story about this. We, yeah, we decided we yeah. were going to go to Prescott to see uh, the Indiana Jones movie, but Prescott we decided Valley. Prescott Valley. So we decided though to go up through 
Jer- Cottonwood and then up to Jerome. Yeah. Cause it's cool to walk around. And, yeah. Just you know, kind of, you know, take the scenic route. Okay. And uh, we'll go to a shop. There. Yeah. I don't know if we want to disclose the name of the shop. No. It's, what's the point? No. Okay. No. I mean, they sold things, something you eat. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I decided to buy something, which is unusual for me, but it's actually uh, was a gift for someone. And why is it unusual for you? Because I don't normally go and buy like it's trinkets not a trinket buyer, or yeah. you know, yeah, e- expensive, you know, foods, true. drinks, That's true. That's, things yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't normally yeah. do that. Okay. Anyway, it was a gift for someone, and I go up to the counter, and there's there's a sign there that says, um, "In order to." Or instead we, we, of yeah, instead of increasing our prices, we are going to add three percent um, for the credit card fee. Okay. So I said, yeah, okay. I got, I got it right okay. here. To our loyal customers, instead of raising our prices, a surcharge of three percent is added to all credit card sales. Thank you for your continued patronage. Okay, fine. That's yeah. nothing so new. Three percent right? surcharge to all That's sales if you use your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> so I I start whipping out cash and I'm like okay I'll pay in cash and I I mean we're it was like thirty something dollars yeah. that I was spending so we're not talking a lot it was just the principle that I thought well I have thirty six or whatever dollars in cash and I'm I'll just pay cash I don't care oh well no we don't take cash <laughs> yeah I just point to the sign on the door there's and I'm a like, sign hmm. huh no cash accepted so I'm saying. So you're not raising your prices 3%. So you um, did but, raise your But price. in reality, you are raising your prices because there's I have no, no other way all, to pay. Yeah, <laughs> there's no other way to pay than by credit card. No check or cash is accepted there. And so I'm talking to the cashier and he just works there, you know, and he's like, yeah, that is worded a little weird. And it's not worded weird. It's just. No, but that's it, what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, he goes, I, doesn't yeah, even I make sense. That's kind of weird. I'm like, if if there's another way to pay, then fine, do the three percent. But if there's no other way to pay, then essentially you are raising your so don't prices. Say instead of raising prices, yeah. just say three percent yeah. because you are raising. So I had to pay a dollar and eight cents, I think, over mm-hmm. my bill. Um. And I just shook my head. Like, yeah, you're this just, just, makes just frustrated. No yeah. sense. You know, oh, I don't want to raise my prices, so I'm going to do the credit card surcharge. But you're not allowed to pay any other way than by credit card. So essentially, <laughs> you are raising your prices. It's happening more and more. So that, that's and the first, though, where yeah. you know. No, you that's know, the first you, way they don't give you an option. You are forced to pay the credit I'm, card fee. That's one of the few places we've come across where they don't even accept cash. Like, there's, yeah. But I think that's going to become a bigger and bigger trend as well, which is, oh, we don't want to take cash. We don't want your employee, our employees, to have to handle cash. And you know, every but eighty percent of people are paying with the card anyway. So why even mess with? I would just, as a business, I'd just say, yeah, you take what. Take what you can, you know, yeah. chart. I I could see people don't want to take well, checks anymore. Okay. And I was saying afterwards that not, you know, people that, okay, I was saying that there was some people out there that don't have a credit card or a debit card mm-hmm. and they operate in cash yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. That's just how they operate. They don't have any credit or debit. They might not be able that to acquire that. Yeah. might not be shopping at the store I was shopping at, Snubbish. but yeah. maybe they are. Yeah. It was kind of pricey little trinket. Well, yeah, it was, I thought it was you know double the price it should have, but it was yeah, from Jerome. Yeah. But no, okay, you make you make a point. But then there's just people that operate that don't want to use credit card. They don't want to be tracked, now, or they don't want to be. Yeah, you per, know, perhaps you can't get a yeah. credit card. Just about anybody can get a debit card nowadays, though. You, if they have a bank account, but you have to have like yeah, a good but, standing with your bank account. If you're overdrawing your account all the time, well, they're not. Gonna, okay, yeah, fair, fair enough. So you're not going to get that. But then people sometimes will buy the. The, the, the prepaid, prepaid cards one. Yeah. because they know that it's hard to function in society with just strictly cash. So they're out there buying. So the point being, though, is if you were just in this case, what if this gets to be more and more? And there's a lot of talk about this become, you know, cashless society. And then you, you can't even. So then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we're not raising our prices, but 
hey, you're probably paying with a credit card anyway. And by the way, the only way you can pay is credit card, and we're going to charge you 3% more. So that raised the prices by 3%, but doesn't give anybody any options yeah. uh, to do anything. And it, it, it begs my uh, – another point I've been bringing up lately. When you see the CPI numbers from the government and these fudge numbers that the government uses as, as far as inflation and all that, which I think now it's around the 4 point something percent range, which is like half of what – you know, I think it actually is. Mm-hmm. Are they factoring in all these fees yeah. that people are paying? Or is that an after charge that they're like, oh, that's not really the price. That's a fee. That's different. So how much is this happening in our country? Yeah. How many millions are probably because billions the of prices, dollars? prices, quote unquote, are rising. But then yeah. you're also a lot of stores more and more every day are doing the fees. Yeah. The minimum wage fee. Are they calculating that? I inflation fee. I mean, we went to a different one, a restaurant here in town that... Uh, we calculated it was like, what, 30% or so fee? Yeah, it it yeah, didn't even yeah, break it down. We, yeah. It just said I've seen fees. 5%. I've seen 30% So that's fees. way more than the, thir- than the 3%. Yeah. I mean, this was like 30% of our bill, and I'm not exaggerating that at all. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's cash discounts offered in those situations. This place didn't even have any. It wasn't like... You, you had no choice yeah. but to pay that way. I'm just, my point being, how much is this happening? How is it probably not being calculated into the inflation numbers? Yeah. And how many billions of dollars is it that people are actually being charged in quote unquote fees that are just on top? It's yeah. just, well, it, it's, I just paid a dollar eight yeah, exactly. more than my bill. Your thoughts, love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Hang tight. Back in just a minute. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. <laughs> Call Diamond Auto Glass first before making an auto glass claim. Now, here's why. Most insurance companies, they use a nationwide glass shop to answer their calls, and they're going to try to route you to their shop, which may very well delay the time it takes to replace your glass. Now, when you get a rock chip in your windshield, stop on by Diamond Auto Glass as soon as possible. Repairing a chip will stop it from spreading, and it'll save you from a costly windshield replacement. If you've replaced your windshield with Diamond Auto Glass before, as I have, you have a lifetime chip repair warranty and no appointments necessary. Just stop on in. Most chip repairs take 10 to 15 minutes. Remember, always call Diamond Auto Glass first, 928-779-4140. That's 928-779-4140 or go to thedifferenceisclear.com. You're listening to the Jeff Orbit Show. I actually find it a little harder to find a lot of items at stores nowadays. I find myself ordering more and more. Yeah. You always find it hard, though. I, I know. it's You go in there and you're like, w- I've just spent time driving here, time searching around, and it gets really frustrating. Mm-hmm. And you want to support local businesses and your local brick and mortar stores as much as possible. I don't know if it's the supply chain issues or what, or if they're just not stocking the same things. But I went to, this was at the big box store, um, the Home Depot, and I keep trying to find this one part that used to just be readily in stock, right? And it was like the third time I went there to look for this thing. So I'm sitting there, I was like, that's it. So while I was shopping, and I bought other things at the, the Home Depot and East Flagstaff on this shopping excursion today. But I, I just I whipped out my phone in front of the empty spot where the thing is supposed to be and hasn't been for the last three times I've went and checked. And I went online and I ordered it from somewhere else right mm-hmm. there while I was standing there. So it goes to show you how it's changing, how it has changed so dramatically. Because I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm done. I'm not going to anyone. I'm, I'm just going to order it. Yeah. So I wonder how much that is going on too. Where, where yeah, and sometimes things you shop for online, it, it can be difficult because you search a certain thing. You know, say like solar lights or something. And it comes with 50 million solar That's lights. Problem, yeah. and it, it You can't is, touch it and feel it. Yeah. And, and it's really, then you got to, it just takes a, a lot of time sometimes. But and, if you know exactly what you're looking for and this is exactly what I want, then it's, it's yeah, really Yeah, no, it's good. easy. And I knew yeah. exactly what you're I want. You're saying that it takes a lot of your own effort to like go to the store or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it also takes a lot of time if you have to, if you get something and you end up not liking it because it doesn't look like what the picture looks like and you send it back. No, and that's then a true. lot of time is taken for that too. Yeah, like when you order a pair of boxers or something. <laughs> Although I, don't, I wouldn't try to pair boxers on at Walmart or anything, but uh, maybe that's a bad example. <laughs> Socks or clothing from yeah, shoes or something. But who yeah. even tries them out at the store? Even now, you just you just buy like three of them and then you return them. Oh. Or is that just me? 
Is that just me? Of people don't buy just you. clothes a whole lot. Anyway. No, no, I try to. So I get a pair of jeans. I'm like, this fits really good. Can we buy five of them? Yeah. Even the boots, the cheap work boots I bought at like Walmart. Yeah. yeah. It's like, just buy like three of those. Just yeah. put them in the he closet. Has like a bunch and Yeah. Stuff. And by the way, those of you who remember, I bought the cheapest ones because I got tired of buying expensive boots and they were falling apart. These boots, they fall apart about the same, same amount of time, yeah. but they cost me thirty two ninety five or something yeah. like that. So two hundred dollar yeah, ones at one of the stores good. here in town. The lady's like, "Well, they should last you like at least six months." Like really, a whole six months. Like I can buy the thirty dollar ones that last six months. Yeah, and is that wearing them like you know walking around uh, department stores, or is that actually working out? Yeah, with working. shovels and dirt, and you know getting them wet and this and that. I wonder if had I asked when we were up in Jerome, uh, well, do you take silver or gold? Mm-hmm. I think I did, and he just oh, looked you at did. Me like, did I? And he's yeah. like, "What is that? Silver or gold? What?" <laughs> Um, that'd be good if we could go around and maybe use real money again. Um, but I do like to own silver and gold as an insurance policy because I don't know what's going to go on with all the in- inflation that's continues to happen. The push towards a digital currency, the push towards a cashless society, which we were just talking about. Um, I buy my silver and gold from desert gold exchange. This is an Arizona based company. Justin and his family-owned company here, they keep their overhead low. They pass those savings on to you. Why don't you put them to the test? I think you're going to find that um, the cost for silver uh, per ounce for gold per ounce is some of the lowest out there. Call Desert Gold Exchange at 888-852-4343. That's Desert Gold Exchange at 888-852-4343. More to come back in just a minute. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. This portion of the show is brought to you by Ms. Kitty Steakhouse in Williams. You're listening to the Jeff Orovitz Show. All right, welcome back. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Always love hearing your comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's see. Let's hit on... um, do we have a giveaway? I think we postponed the giveaway for this month. Yeah, we're not doing it right yeah, now. We're gonna we will let you know pick it back up in again. August because that's when um, people are just kind of out and about right now. Yeah, and we're and gonna we're gone. We're a gone lot too a lot with this the month. summer. Yeah, and so we'll get you back need to, to kind of like accumulate the prizes. Yeah, I do thank uh, Gettle's yeah. High Desert Mechanical though mm-hmm. for continuing to put in the fifty dollar cash debit card that you couldn't have used at the sh- well you could have used at the store that we went even though it's a cash debit card yeah it's a debit card that you could have used Still at this 3%. particular store you would have got lost three percent of your purchasing power there uh but Gettle's high desert mechanical man you may need them right now with the heat um it's cranking and there's really no end in sight although i did see some possible storms maybe early next week mm-hmm. look like monsoon type thunderstorms so We'll see what happens there. But if you're in a situation right now where your heater is just, or not your heater, pfft, you don't need that. <laughs> yeah. That was two weeks ago where you yeah. still needed the heater. Yeah, everything was freezing still. The AC part of your HVAC, if that takes a dive, uh, call Gettles High Desert Mechanical at 928 567 2200. That's Gettles High Desert Mechanical 928 567 2200. I know they'll treat you good just like they did when they replaced or repaired. Our HVAC system in Flagstaff. So call them up. Gettle's High Desert Mechanical, 928-567-2200. They will replace it, too, if it needs to be, but they were able to keep ours running. Yeah. And they did a really good job at that. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, White House report. Hey, I got a couple of White House ones here. First of all, if you've been following the, the, the Secret Service found cocaine in the White House over the weekend, uh, that's they, they have done a second test on it and it definitely is cocaine. So somebody was having a 4th of July party. I don't know if Hunter was in town and visiting. Well, Did you see the memes? Of, right away. There was the memes with, um, with, with uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and there's just powder everywhere. Like, <laughs> like uh, what was that, what was that movie with uh, stuff? Yeah, Al Pacino, the, um, uh, the one where he's the drug guy in Miami. Scarface. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Scarface. He's just the piles of it on the table. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like that. So that's going on in the White House. Here's another one that should probably scare you, but maybe it won't. White House reports that it signals openness to manipulating sunlight to prevent climate change. So they're actually looking into studies now. You know, this is like stuff mm-hmm. that's like science fiction not too long ago. Yeah. Because of what they perceive as man caused climate change, their idea is to maybe perhaps study a way to dim 
the sunlight a little bit. I don't know by seeding the clouds or something or who the heck knows what they're going to do or I don't know, but I, this was... Soon it's going to be like, if we only blow up the sun, don't worry yeah, we about the moon. Oh, we, wait, but the moon doesn't shine without the sun, but they won't think of that. <laughs> if we start seeing them launching stuff to the sun to cool it or something, <laughs> you know we've got trouble. Just some but blinds. Just the fact that they even throw these things out there, that they're even, you know, considering that, oh, how do we, how do we dim the atmosphere? How do we dim the sky a little bit because of... Well, there happens to be a heat crazy. wave going on right now, and so they're Always. all like... Oh, yeah, no, we have to do the something. You know, we have to do something. It annoys me every season of the year when, especially the media, but it's, and especially the politicians, act like, insert, it's never been this hot. It's yeah. never, oh, we got all this snow. This is crazy. This has never happened. Oh, crazy monsoon weather, and it hailed. Or there was lightning, or there was a tornado, or there was a... A hurricane oh, somewhere. It's like of. this happens every year. And then if they get rid of the sun, then they can't have their beloved solar panels. Oh, you you bring up a good ding, point. Ding, did ding. They, did they study that? Where, where are they going to get electricity for all of their electric vehicles that nobody is buying? Yeah, because that nobody we can afford to buy everything else pretty soon or something. Yeah. So okay. So they're going to dim the, dim the sunlight somehow. There's a little dimmer switch. These are the geniuses that can't even figure out how to balance the budget. How to um, solve just about any problem? They've ruined the gas. Look, they've ruined the gas can. They've ruined the light bulb. They're going to somehow <laughs> diminish the sunlight coming in for. Well, you know, I was global saying earlier, warming. what about all the plants and crops and these people forests, that killed the dinosaurs? Not planning Everything on eating anymore. Rely on that. Um, yeah, I, where, you, good point. Where do we get our food? We need sun for crops. A certain amount of sun is yeah. necessary it for is. Our crops. It is, and and for people. Yeah, like to stay alive. Vitamin D. Yeah, a little bit of sunshine, yeah. Yeah. People need to get out a little bit more. Get outside. Well, there's the, all those studies that almost all those COVID hospitalizations, almost every single one of them was vitamin D deficient. Yeah. I believe it because people don't get outside. I don't outside know the or, number on, you know, right now, but yeah. it's high. It's almost every one of them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Okay. Olivia makes a great point, though, about the electricity that has to be generated for the, all their great plans. Um, I have this uh, another article here kind of shifting a little bit to the craziness, the push towards electrification. They, there's a study that was done by Triple A. You've, you've heard about the, you all know the F-150, the, the Ford pickup, very popular line of trucks. So they came up with the F-150 Lightning, which I think just kind of started hitting what a year ago, or it's, it's going to hit. Was that the one that Bruce had on order? Siddling yeah, there? I think he put a deposit. You can usually put a deposit on these things for yeah. a couple hundred bucks. And I knew there the, was one something coming out, yeah, but I don't know what The car manufacturers was. get all excited when you do a deposit because even though most people probably won't take it, it shows this massive support. And they're like, oh, look mm-hmm. at all. We've got 4 million people that want to get the new vehicle. So the F-150 Lightning is the electric pickup truck, which we've seen commercials for. You know, everybody's happy, and you know they're, they're pulling their big boat, and <laughs> they're loaded up with all the big bags of concrete or whatever, or, you know, yeah. c- the cement and this and that. Um, well, so- that's the reason you have a pickup truck. You haul stuff. I, I you have a camper, a boat, jet skis, or a trailer for work. I mean, that's why you, that's why you have a truck. I mean, for week, off-roading. Yeah, I'm in week I mean, six of not having my pickup truck, and it's killing me because I use that for work. That is a work truck, and um, I, you yeah, have so it. So all to these load calculations up. on how great it is—is is that hauling stuff or? Well, not? apparently not. According to AAA, they did a study. They loaded up the F-150 with 1,400 pounds of sandbags, which was close to the truck's, I guess, maximum carrying capacity, right? And the study found that there was a 25% diminishment in range with that full payload. So Mm -hmm. 25% less. So instead of making it 278 miles, so they claim, it would make it 210 miles under a, a, a a full charge. And that's probably on flat. Grand. Yeah, I, I don't. They came come up with these studies that the the thing's going to have like what a three hundred mile range or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, where's that in Florida on flat surface, not going up a hill against at, the wind? Yeah, or with the wind? Yeah. Now, something. if you're going against the wind, it's going to be hard, like less mileage. No, if you're going with the wind, you got the wind at your back. 
against the wind. I know. Becoming... If you're going against it, though, it's pushing back on you, and then you yeah, you'd have less mileage. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah, but I'm saying wow. when when they do this nice, when they do the study, though, it's probably oh, with, with the, the wind, wind because, right, you know, and, and things like that, and. Uh, it, well, and probably they probably got the right point. What was that, Olivia, with the groundwater suckage we were talking about last year? Somebody came up to oh, study that, that it's tilting, the, earth the earth is tilted. So they find a maximum tilt, and they anyway <laughs> they do that study. So it, it's not getting it, it's not working. I think that this electric thing beyond the little commuter cars is really going to fall apart quicker than we may have thought. They're going to try to force it, or we're going to be living in in vehicular hell. Because people are going to be like, has to charge your vehicle. Yeah, all the time. Uh, well, yeah, you're going to have like blackout times where you can't plug it in and stuff because it's so much draw on the grid. Because everybody's like, oh, I only got 150 miles. Because mm-hmm. I mean, this isn't even towing something. So I don't know what the tow capacity is of, of an F-150. If I base it off like my Titan, I think it's 8,000 pounds or something, eight or nine thousand pounds. So you, th- you tow a trailer, a camper, mm-hmm. a good sized camper. What if you had a load and you hooked up? something to tow mm-hmm. how quickly what, what are you getting 100 miles? can you even get to lake powell with your boat with this f-150 well, I, don't, they I don't think want so. you to they want everyone to live in a city and and you stay in there and you don't take road trips and you don't go very far you go in your office and cubicle yeah, that, oh yeah. yeah looking at it under that little lens yeah. right there yeah. it's it it works i can but see that a lot of this is out of touch with the rural Mindset, yeah, I yeah and their rural if you lifestyle use the bus. is that you go on road trips or you commute a hundred miles here and there, and or you tow stuff all the time or big diesel trucks, and well, that, then Ford just, ain't going to be selling these vehicles because in two thousand and twenty one, when they announced the F one fifty, the electric the lightning car uh, truck, the price estimate was let's just call it forty thirty nine nine seven five forty thousand dollars. Now the price, massive price increase, fifty nine thousand dollars. It's gone up wow. by twenty thousand dollars. That's as of two thousand twenty three. So to get a vehicle that can't haul stuff, that can't tow stuff, that has a diminished range, and I think they were saying that the range of the gas engine one was uh, version of truck used in the test was rated to have a three hundred mile range. The gas one was like close to five hundred miles, and all you do is pull up next to a gas station. Fill it up real quick and you're on yeah. your way again. No, no fairness, finding the charging ports. miles is probably not towing anything. And Okay, we could, yeah. Flat. But if you were, yeah. you could just but pull yeah. up to a gas station yeah. and, and get it. And that engine doesn't, um, you're, I don't see how this is going to work. And I think the well, price is killing it. And the, the reality of when someone tries to use this as a work truck, and they're also hauling around things. Think about the toolbox I have and all the hundreds of pounds mm-hmm. of tools that are in there. It's just going to drain it real quick. It's not going to be practical yeah. to use. Yeah. Well, the- Maybe the people that are buying it are just going to haul their bike around and, yeah, you know, yeah, to go yeah. bike somewhere. Go, go do something like that, probably. <laughs> All right. If I was selling a home in the Flagstaff area, you know who I'd call right now, and that's Kelly Broadus with the Broadus Properties Group, brokered by EXP. Kelly's got a full team of dedicated professionals that are with you every step of the way. Uh, it's easy to get uh, your the valuation of your home right now as well. If you go to northernarizonafinehomes.com, you can get your home valuation just click on it's easy home valuation enter your address and you're going to get a quick email back with the how much your home is worth uh kelly's got extensive experience and knowledge of the market right here she knows how to price market and sell your home for the highest price possible google kelly brought us you'll find all the great reviews she's got look up brought us b-r-o-a-d-d-u-s that's b-r O-A-D-D-U-S, or give her a call at 888-446-5602. That's Kelly Broadus at 888-446-5602. All right, let's talk Indiana Jones when we come back. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. Sportsman's Bar and Grill has been voted the best sports bar in Flagstaff 13 years in a row. They've got 17 TVs for all your sports action. Plus, all day, every day, you can always get something good to eat off their $4 menu. And don't forget, Sportsman's Bar and Grill has happy hour going on all the time. $3 Mexican canned beers and hard seltzers, $4 daily craft beer specials, and $4 pint specials. 
And don't forget about their daily specials. I go there a lot for these great specials, including Taco Tuesday. They have awesome tacos at Sportsman's Bar and Grill. Wing Wednesday, half-price wings. You know, these wings are like gold nowadays, so take advantage of Wing Wednesday. Get half-price wings. And Thursday night at Sportsman's Bar and Grill, you get $3 sliders. Sportsman's Bar and Grill up by the hospital just north of downtown Flagstaff in the Bashes Shopping Center. I should have left more time for this one because I, I don't know if we'll be able to cut it in four minutes. You think we will? Indiana well, Jones. Well, we can try, so we better get to it. Yeah. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Dial of Destiny. We went to Prescott Valley and saw it. And mm-hmm. I thought it was a good movie. Yeah, we, we liked it. I mean, we were skeptical because of the whole Disney aspect. And- I wasn't quite ske- as skeptical as well, you were. Yeah, only because I had heard just you had heard you know, through the grapevine or whatever yeah. all this you know it's Disney and yeah, Disney's it's, it's doing their thing and but I didn't know. I mean, it makes sense that because it could have been. Yeah, and Disney bought Lucas Films, which does that and mm-hmm. Star Star, Star Wars, Wars and yeah. all those things. Yeah. So it's hard because you, you still want to see these movies, yeah. but we didn't find it. You know, Disney esque woke no. stuff at all. No, no, and I said on. Probably- I, because they knew that that would be a disaster. Well, yeah, it, ma- maybe. it was just Indiana Jones. It was, Indiana it was Jones. typical yeah, Indiana Jones movies, yeah. and this is the fifth one, and yeah, it's and reminiscent of of the all the four before it. Yeah. It was very similar. Um, yeah, it, it was. You had to suspend reality in some parts, some right, car right. chase scenes, things like that. It's always okay. Like, you know, it's always like are not realistic, but that's the way yeah, Indiana yeah, Jones movies yeah. are. But if you liked Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the original one, and then the La- Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, that was one with Sean Connery, you will like you'll like this movie. Mm-hmm. It was a little long, but that's okay. It's probably supposedly Harrison Ford's last Indiana Jones movie, but mm-hmm. who the heck knows with that kind of stuff? But no, they the I had said on Friday that. Nobody's seen this movie, or maybe it's yeah, last Thursday. Really and there were some conservative commentators out there saying that, "Oh, it's woke, it's woke," because there was a, there was a, there was a scene that they had in the preview that the girl said, um, "Oh, you stole it from her, him, I stole it from it, and then I stole it from you, whatever, whatever." Oh, that's capitalism. And I was like, yeah. "Okay, that's an annoying comment." If the movie's littered, and that's what I said last week, if the movie's littered with comments like that, then I'm going to be mad and hate it. But other than that, one stupid comment. That was comment, the only one. Yeah. And, and it just happened. Really? Okay. Group. If you're in a group of people, somebody says something stupid. Do you just not associate with anybody yeah. anymore? So yeah. if you like Indiana Jones, the first one, the third one, really any of them, um, I think you'll like this one. It's in that vein. Mm-hmm. It's in that that uh, tradition, I guess, of Indiana yeah. Jones. And it was just kind of a good adventure action right. type of movie. And some people weren't, I guess, too sure about the the girl that was yeah. introduced in in this yeah but it's that's not uncommon i mean nah, in the, there's been like love interest girls but then there's also been the villain girls yeah. before too like in the crystal skull yeah and um last crusade yeah, they kind of ha- they both had a, a woman a leading yeah, woman that was, was kind of working against him and so it was fine i'm not giving anything away but this girl was no different than you know any of the other movies yeah no it was fine and um i guess don't always believe everything you hear out there and um, let's not I, be so sensitive about one comment yeah one comment and that's what we were saying last yeah. week too all right more to come next hour including uh zach elman joins me from just wireless we got a lot to cover including what's been going on in france hang tight don't go anywhere more to come back in just a minute This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. This hour of the show is brought to you by Crazy Country Boys Services. Another hour starts now. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. All right, welcome back. Hour two of the show. Zach Elman's here with me. He's the CEO of Just Wireless and Ilum, not the CEO, I don't think, but you're Ilum. I don't, I, I don't even know. Confusion director, I think, at this point for Ilum is the <laughs> appropriate title. director. And somebody who has very positive things to say today and very negative things. 
So I, I'm keeping we'll it, it positive. You're keeping it positive. I'm having, okay. a, good, I'm having right. a good time in America. You're feeling. You're feeling it. You after the fourth. After what I should say, and I spent time with Angela and Isabel or Olivia last hour. I'm trying hard to just make sure I say Independence Day, because yep. a lot of people don't know. Like you say the fourth, sure. and they're like, "Well, what is that? It's just beer and barbecue." <laughs> day off <laughs> well, my job. Day off from my job. <laughs> No, but you had a you, you, good experience Fourth of July. Yeah, no, I mean Independence I, Day. Yeah, it's kind of the, the day leading up to it. I, I really felt a, a new kind of sense of patriotism, which was so refreshing. I mean, I just in this town. I mean, I didn't leave. I didn't go anywhere. I've I, last year I went to the parade. It, it was good. Yeah. It, um, it, they always put on a good show, but it um, it, it's one of those things where I I just feel last year we had all the political candidates going through. We were kind of doing that whole spiel. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to the parade this year, but I heard that it was good, that people were out and about. I saw a lot of people with flags out of their windows and trucks with flags on. I just, it felt going out shopping the day before getting barbecue stuff. Everybody was really going to enjoy the day, which we should, and maybe reflect a little bit on why we have it. Not just like you said previously, Oh, it's a holiday. Great. Yeah. Barbecue it's fireworks, lo- it's yeah. lost. In this country. I mean, there's a reason. And it's so important to, to get back to just knowing the Constitution, knowing the Bill of Rights, understanding why we're all here in this crazy messed up uh, country of ours, and how we can get better and improve so much so easily with if we just got rid of uh, the idiocracy. Because we're at that point. We have hit the idiocracy yeah, you, precipice. You throw a little cocaine on idiocracy and you get... <sighs> Super idiocracy. No, we weren't. We didn't get the invite to the uh, White no, House no, no. 4th of July blow party, apparently. I don't know. I've reconfirmed uh, Secret Service right, now have two, we con- two times. Have we confirmed this is an anthrax? Because <laughs> yeah, they get saying, very confused. Yeah. Knows? No, I think it's cocaine, and who knows? You'd think they'd find out where it's coming from, but it, you, you won't hear about it in, in a couple weeks. So, But these well, are people that are literally trying to figure out how to dim the sun. I was talking about that last hour, mm-hmm. too cure the supposed uh, climate change and global yes. warming. Which, want to, that, that's a one-way ticket to death of our planet. So I say, and this, they are super taking scary. it seriously, yeah. which is all you need to know about these whack jobs on the far left. I'm sorry, people who are on the left, that you have to get grouped in, just like I'm sorry that I have to get grouped in with the alt-right people, or for people who are just conservative-minded that don't want to spend uh, you know $60 trillion on a, a freeway to India through the ocean uh, <laughs> that say it's a bad idea. Um, people with level headedness and uh, want to take things uh, up front, be honest. Those are the people that I think build this country. The people who are on the other side and want to do what they're doing in the White House, which is completely disrespectful. Um, it's time to go. It's time to rechange <clears throat> yeah. this country. Yeah. And I think that you're getting that pushback. You're sensing it. I got to say, we, we see so much negative out there and we see, you know, there were shootings this weekend. We see the, the horrible things that are going on. But in my daily interaction with people, people seem to want to be good, want to be nice. Yep. Want to, I, I dropped something today. Someone's like, oh, here, you picked it. You know, there's an attitude of being yeah. nice out there and wanting to work together and not, oh, I'm not going to pick that up because you're conservative or you're liberal. Um, I, I hope we can push back on the craziness. I think that a lot of people have woken up in this country, but we shall see how it all plays out. Um, you see stupid things, the stories of, oh, we don't want to go see the fireworks because they cause pollution and, you know, they're going to cause climate change and this and that. But then I think most Americans want to go see real fireworks and they're fine. I mean, we couldn't have them here because it's a windstorm and, you know, crazy out there. But uh, I think people draw the line and say, and that's just sounding silly. Ask ask a uh, a militant um, environmentalist this question, everybody out there. Would you rather die or live? <laughs> just a, <laughs> just straight, a general. Because okay. what their plans are at yeah. their extreme level, they're going to kill us all. Every way you look at it, we're not going to eat bugs. We're not going to sit here and starve to death because you're going to get rid of all the crops mm. because of global warming. These people have mental problems. Yeah. We all should be on the same page with wanting Co- cocaine to protect, induced mental problems. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, we should all be on the same page that we want to, you know, have the best environment that we can in a smart, stable way. And here's a big problem, though, Jeff, and, you know, something that we've talked about before. 
We live in an instant gratification society. Everything needs to be done now. Save the planet tomorrow. Wah, 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 wah. The people who are greedy and corrupt and want to you know, make money, they use that towards the weak-minded who don't do their research, don't think freely for themselves. And all this causes is just societal issue after issue. And it's going to lead to the breakdown of modern civilization if we're not careful. People need to stand up against this. I am not somebody who wants to, once again, put oil in the ocean, light yeah. all the trees on fire to do, you know, just a fun, like, clearing of, of property. We're not talking about that. But when you're going to put a shield over the sun that gives us life, you're off your rocker. Yeah. You that, have no, it's just it's bizarre. What scientist puts his name to that piece of paper saying this is a good idea? Well, and, and just if you didn't listen last hour, they're, they're – pursuing in a serious way or whatever goobly gook language they use how to somehow dim the sun i would imagine by creating more clouds more vapor more something uh who knows they could put something up in our, space who knows what they could well, come well, up with our, our all point, in our point oh two uh increase in temperature over the last 25 years in this on this planet uh if we went down a degree if they did this and we just took a degree hit to cool off the planet, it could set off a chain of event, events that would lead us to the next ice age. Yeah, what could people? I, yeah. You would all die. Yeah, you no, would no, all this die. Is, this remember, these are you don't want your government. They can, they can barely do anything. I mentioned the gas can, the light bulb, the ah. things they've ruined last hour, ah. and our they, economy, the, the economy, the budget. Look at what's going on in Ukraine. They certainly can't block the sun. Yeah, they would something disastrous ah. would happen. But there will be and nothing surprises me anymore. Now there was a good uh, First Amendment ruling uh, last Friday, or the, the the federal judge that came out and said that you US District Court judge temporarily preventing the White House officials from meeting with tech companies. So there's some good news on restraints there. Mm -hmm. This was about social media censorship. This was the shadow banning stuff that many of us, including myself, alleged during the whole COVID nonsense. And, you know, we're talking labels that were slapped on podcasts we're talking people who are just outright banned oh, from yeah, you youtube mean the, et cetera, the restriction et cetera. of the first amendment yeah, that yeah, all these yeah. companies should but be the put white house was going form? and yeah. the socials were coming to the white house and the federal judge saying hey you guys can't you can't talk to each other anymore at least there's a temporary uh, prevention from officials meeting with companies i mean this was a uh, this should have been done a long time ago it, it goes to show you that things will come around but it can take years for for it to blow back finally, it takes probably three weeks to get a slice of pizza at the uh, delicatessen outside the Congress because they don't they don't work, they don't they don't do anything. Yeah. They're there to take their bribes, take their greed, do their lobbying, make a bunch of money, and then leave and leave the rest of us holding the bag. More importantly, increase our taxes, make us pay more, put regulations on us, and basically put us into slavery in the nouveau era. I cannot stress how angry i am right now at the way that things are going in this country when we had we were on such a roll five years ago did anybody remember yeah. five years ago i do i i was i was I humming along do. and things yeah. were great if you think that there's not going to be another election there is idiots yeah and we're I have one, I, and hopefully and it dramatically I changes. I really hope that for the first time in a while i can feel strong about the intelligence of my country I because, hope so. I, and, and, but maybe we won't have any disinformation like before. We'll actually maybe. get facts on people. People will be educated and not just led by mass corporate but people media people need with to lies. take an initiative to educate themselves. I not totally take agree. Take the 30-second clip, the, the little snippet on Twitter or whatever. Oh, completely. Or Facebook's supposedly equivalent that's going to be coming out of Zuckerberg's. You, you, you and know, I engage. Yeah, you this. have to. Because it's part of your life. Yeah. You might think it boring. Like my, my wife, we've talked about this. Perfect example. She's a little bit younger than me, but she's kind of that generation. They they, they see the, the phone update. Mm -hmm. and they go, did you hear about this? And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Is she listening? I'm, I'm, she, she's tuned out a long time ago. <laughs> come on. We've been married Trying for a while, get you, Jeff. Get you in trouble you know? here, I mean, what you, come on. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting where she will become engaged once we kind of talk about it a little bit yeah. and we hear counter arguments and do some research and look at the situation like you should do. I'd say probably only 20% of the U.S. does that right now. I, I'd be shocked you if think, it was you even think it's that lower? high. Yeah, you, it's, are? you know, it's it's overwhelming because you're getting so much, and you purposefully you're purposefully getting so you're getting much, so yeah. much. You're getting so much misinformation. On the we're going to get to France here in a second. Just this one here, they went crazy because France is burning, and we'll get to the details of that. 
some library supposedly burnt down, but it turns out that it was misreported as a library in the Philippines. It's a big difference there. So you're always getting, I'm, I'm actually surprised with all the technology we've got. Uh, surprise is not a good word. But every, every week when I do this show, I, I find things. I'm like, well, that wasn't exactly accurate. I, I got all this information. But I can't be all over the world. I'm relying on news sources from sure. other places. And, and it's, the amount of inaccuracies is, is overwhelming. On the more fun side, Angela and I talked about this and, and Olivia last hour. We went and saw Indiana Jones. Yes. And you, we were talking about this before we came on air. Yeah, you didn't go do it. And I was like, well, first of all, it wasn't woke. But you said, oh, I heard it was just awful. Now, I just heard it was it was it was uh, basically uh, punched in. It, it was just it, they went through the the uh, the motions when they yeah, made it. That's I, all. I, I guess mean, if it, if you look at the the two of the better ones, Raiders of the Lost Ark and and um, um, the Last Crusade, it was kind of similar to that. So yeah, maybe it's after five, it's all punched in. I guess, but it definitely wasn't woke. And I'm I'm not. I don't want to get back down that road again because we already talked about it. But. So many commentators are saying it's woke, it's woke, it's woke. And then I watched it and I was like, it wasn't woke. What sure. were they talking about? They hadn't even seen it. So we're making assumptions now I, without I, even seeing exactly. or experiencing it or having a mass. You have a lot of people saying, oh, it kind of stunk. I didn't like it. That's fine. But before something comes out, how does anyone sure. know? And, and, but, but see, getting, Jeff, you, you selling me this, I, I – I don't go to movie theaters anymore. Come on, come on. What, what it was two and a half hours. Sorry, it was a little long sorry, sitting dude. here. I, I, yeah. I don't do it. Yeah. Sorry. And seriously, Harkins I, with the refillable popcorn. I can, I can buy kind of like... seventy pounds of popcorn for the price that you sell me a sixteen <laughs> ounce bag. Yeah. Anyway, I, and I get it. Don't worry. Ten I, bucks. I, I'm not. I'm it just ten bucks come... for a bag. It, look, Jeff. It, I, I get it. I get why they have to do that because they make yeah. no money showing the movie. If anybody else, you want the backstory of movies, uh, there's some great documentaries about movie theaters on uh, Amazon. Okay. But anyways, I will watch it on Amazon. I yeah. will not pay, so I have to wait a little bit. And but Three I will weeks. watch it. I'm not yeah, going to be out before you know. Yeah, I'm not going to take somebody else's word if it's woke or not. Yeah, until I see it. Yeah. That happens all the time. But. Look, it, do you think that that conservative talk radio was always perfect? Absolutely not. You have to do, like we were talking, your own research, make up your own de- opinions, and make them facts-based as much as you can. That's what makes this country so great. Yeah. Reread. And when you're wrong, it's like, okay. Reread the Constitution. Reread yeah. the Bill of Rights. You understand the self-preservation that they were trying to instill of us and the individualism. The only country that's ever been created out of individualism. I am an individualist. Nobody else gets that. I, I'm sorry. I don't need a babysitter. I don't need a nanny. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a grown man. That's where the line in the sand needs to be drawn don't in this country. Need over, and we're, again, touching back on last hour, we are talking about somebody who died at the Grand Canyon this past weekend hiking in 100 plus degree weather, which is sad. But then I think about probably the dozens, if not hundreds, that did hike it and didn't die. Mm-hmm. I don't want the government to come in and say, you can't hike it now until it's uh, well, o- October because people do die. And it's like, okay, yeah, people do die. Sure, and, and bigger and problem it's too with, bad. with that situation, bigger problem, the worst association in the United States, the American Bar Association, the biggest evil that we have in this country, in my opinion. Uh, if you're an attorney, I don't care. Uh, go take a back seat. You guys do too much these days that's not just and right for, for making things fair. It's all about money and i will say that as somebody who went to law school didn't graduate and ran because the people in that room were about a paycheck 95 percent of the time and they're good attorneys out there don't get me wrong zach doesn't like lawyers because, oh <laughs> don't even get me started on the i legal do have a couple system, good brother. lawyer friends it's not all lawyers I do too. But one of my one yeah, of my best some... friends in town is yeah. an attorney i yeah. i but it's so corrupt, and it's such a puppy mill experience now in our legal system. I, that's one thing that the left and the right, I hope someday, can come together and figure out. Our, our criminal justice system is a disgrace for the amount of liberty that we have been given and granted by our Constitution to have it this messed up. It is it is a disgrace. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Send in your comments. I want to get into what's going on in France um, uh, and a couple other big issues. So stick around for that. If you're thinking about refinancing your home right now, call Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans. Uh, Nova Home Loans is Arizona's largest privately owned mortgage lender. 
They make local decisions like a bank, which helps, but they also have the ability to act like a broker so they can find the best program out there for you, whether you're doing a refinance, whether you're doing uh, an investment property, a second home and vacation home, things like that. Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans should be able to help you out. Give her a call right now at 928-310-6458. That's 928-310-6458. Nova Home Loans. NMLS 697411, Kim Dawson, NMLS 3087, BK number 090242, Equal Housing Opportunity, subject to credit approval, terms and conditions may apply. More to come. Hang tight. Back in just a minute. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. Call Diamond Auto Glass first before making an auto glass claim. Now, here's why. Most insurance companies, they use a nationwide glass shop to answer their calls, and they're going to try to route you to their shop, which may very well delay the time it takes to replace your glass. Now, when you get a rock chip in your windshield, stop on by Diamond Auto Glass as soon as possible. Repairing a chip will stop it from spreading, and it'll save you from a costly windshield replacement. If you've replaced your windshield with Diamond Auto Glass before, as I have, you have a lifetime chip repair warranty and no appointments necessary. Just stop on in. Most chip repairs take 10 to 15 minutes. Remember, always call Diamond Auto Glass first, 928-779-4140. That's 928-779-4140 or go to thedifferenceisclear.com. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. Zach Elman's here with me. He's the CEO of Just Wireless, justwirelessaz.com, top of my head. That's it. You got it. Look at this. What would you do now? What is this? My old smartphone. I, I think you guys said, we'll your, get into some deals you got like coming up. like a banana room. peel that sat on the counter for a week. What's going on there? Back's cracked. <laughs> How'd that happen? Do I need a new phone? Is that fixable? Well, uh, you, you, you can the fix this about yeah, anything. No, we fix bad glass. It's not it, worth it. Apple kind of made it great for their customers where that is not a just a very easy repair. Yeah, okay. We have to laser cut it out. We do it. Well, you got um, some good deals that are going on yeah. right now, just wireless. We so actually, maybe we, I need to come We in. just drop prices on all that stuff. So, <laughs> And right. here's the kicker. You can't trade that in like that. So if you go to yeah. Verizon and get your credit. Yeah, they went because I dropped it. Uh, I mean, everything else could be working, but if you have that, because they can't fix them themselves. Yeah. So, would you take that? I would. Yeah, you would but take I, that. I take this, a lot of stuff. This thing looks like it came out of a plane huh. and, and landed on the ground and, without I mean, a parachute. That that's what I like to call a prom uh, wallflower that I pluck and make beautiful <laughs> make and then and send back out into the world. Make a cut. Yeah, send it back out. Yep. Um, Timberline Firearms and Training, uh, just five minutes north of the Flagstaff Mall. You can find it on your smartphone. Probably not mine, um, because it's all cracked up. Uh, they've got great training courses going on right now. They got this every month where they've stopped the bleed course. Have you ever taken that one, Zach? Uh, that. I, I am certified EMT. Oh, but I, I didn't would, know that. I would gladly be, I mean, I, it's a re, good I haven't reasserted it in years, but yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's good just the tourniquets and all that, yeah. or if you happen to slice your your wrist or something on this smartphone believe, jaggedness here. Believe me, I, I yeah. have blood on my floor of the office. <laughs> yeah, for so all many the, things. Uh, anyway, they've got that every month. They've also got uh, f- uh, first shots program, intermediate handgun training, uh, expert level stuff if you're at that level. Uh, go on out there. Call them, actually, uh, as well. If you don't want to take a ride, uh, you can call them and book one of these courses, 928-526-7900, or go on out there. They've got a great special for July Range time is unlimited, you know, that day, not unlimited. You go buy it and you keep coming back. Or like when I go to the movie theater, keep trying to refill the popcorn. Uh, you go out there. You, it's normally it's one hour limit. You can stay there a couple hours and um, it's all just going to be charged at that one rate. So go to Timberline Firearms and Training just five minutes past the Flagstaff Mall. I think that everybody's in everybody's business. Just to wrap this up as far as just uh, – Part, a lot of the problems we have. You pointed out the the issue going on, which I wasn't aware of with this. It's a football player in yeah, Florida. Yeah, the University of Florida issue. Yeah, and maybe just we've got like four minutes before we're going to break. Uh, what Florida happened? Gators fans out there, I hope you go 0-12 next year just because of your athletic department. <laughs> um, uh, kid was caught on tape singing a rap song using uh, the inappropriate N-word. Yeah. it's It possibly is ruining his life. Yeah. Um, well, is it by himself or he's in a group? I, from what I've heard, 
it it was kind of like a party situation or something, um, which, you know, I mean, God, this is one of the reasons why I'm so glad the social media wasn't alive when I was 20 years old, the stuff that would be out there now. And he's 18, right? Poor, these poor kids that have to just check. And, and it, think about this for us uh, as a psychological effect. You you don't trust. You're always looking over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. You're breaking away from relationships. It's all the downfall. Why, why is it that we keep leading back to all these problems coming out of Silicon Valley? Maybe we need to, to look at them in a smarter way. Today, we're hearing about the Florida case. We're also hearing about uh, how it's affecting our elections and our truth uh, in politics. What are they good for? At this point, there are so many negatives that are built up around yeah. social media all of a sudden. But anyways, this kid, they had his, he, he got, somebody put this out there. University of Florida took his scholarship away. Um, he's had other scholarships go away to the wayside. It's now found out that another blue chip recruit that Florida was trying to get uh, before him has now obviously uh, gone away from his other commitment. He rescinded his commitment. I think it was to Alabama or something. And now is going Let's to, go he's signed with Florida. Hmm. So there are some legal possibilities here with slander and the release of the information you call upon those the lawyers University that you don't of like florida <laughs> yes they could be in some trouble yeah i right know and it's all stemming from a video of a rap song where he was saying the words um that the rap person was singing sure. the n-word sure and in a supposedly in a group setting doing that and the the overall point First of all, it's like all these kids are in a reality show all the time. They're yeah. never off, so there's always that going on. And you make, is it a mistake? Or you're you're singing a song that's being put out there on, on disc or on stream yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and we've all, well, I don't know if we've all heard We I've heard them. You've heard them. And uh, it's quite explicit, a lot Jeff, of these I grew songs. Up, I grew up in Oakland in the 80s. Yeah, so I know I have rap albums. Talking rap albums NWA and oh, yeah, uh, Public Enemy and... Ah. You know, all that stuff. If they, and, if, but the, if that is what makes somebody judge your character. Yeah, your whole life is ruined now because of this. We are done societally. Yeah. I'm sorry. You are breaking down societal norm barriers. And, 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 and But who did this harm to the extent that it's not forgivable? If the kid, I come out, have the kid be like, look. This uh, is an example so stupid of maybe stuff. I Why should, did I do you know, that? Yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of ever pandering or apologizing to the woke mob, but eh, give them a chance at least. It was just like, nope, done, caught, done. But this is more nefarious. This is using wokeness for business. Mm-hmm. Because we all know the NCAA, hey, they're all, oh, they're so perfect. They're a puppy mill. They make millions and millions of dollars off the backs of athletes and they treat them like garbage. They are a horrible organization. So another perfect example of being um, basically judge and jury by public opinion exactly. in a matter of but, seconds but, and then, yeah. and then impacting your entire well, life. When you can use your, your liberal woke media as a business tool and you do, why are you not shown in the spotlight of doing something like that? Possibly it goes under the table. Yeah. Nobody talks Probably. about it. It's just, Oh, look at this kid. He's such a blatant racist. And it's like, we're all throwing, throwing stones and all living in glass houses. Exactly. Nowadays, I so. mean, the, I, I just, I feel, I know how much hard work kids in high school put in, in athletics to get scholarships. That kid, I just want to, I, I literally just want to give him a hug. Yeah. Be like, dude, it, you, this isn't the end of your life. It might seem like it, but yeah, I, I but just, the, uh, the other his, things come I, I just up. hope yeah. his parents are Astute good parents as far as because I, I, I the, don't know possible avenues that they uh, may have. It All right. just breaks my heart. Zach Elman's here with me. Let's come back. Let's talk about what's going on in France back in a minute. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. You're listening to the Jeff Orovitz Show. All right, Zach Elman's here with me. Uh, I want to talk about what's going on in France, but before we do that, I want to remind you about a couple of great things going on at Zero Res of Northern Arizona this month. Uh, three rooms of carpet for 138 bucks, but it's actually four rooms. You get another room there for 138 bucks. That's a really good deal. Uh, Zero Res Northern Arizona dot com. Also, you can get uh, some great deals on the upholstery, cleaning your upholstery, cleaning the, like if you have a camper or an RV, just think about those camping trips and eh, dogs coming in and out and 
you know, your <laughs> those campers can get pretty dirty. Zero res of Northern Arizona. They'll be able to get that cleaned up for you. They also do house cleaning, by the way. So go to zero res Northern Arizona dot com right now. That's zero res Northern Arizona dot com. The thing in France exploded really quickly. I people have sometimes have a hard time when I when I meet people out there and I think they think I'm glued to the events all the time. But when I get away from here, I try to disconnect in a, in a pretty big way. So I, sometimes I miss things and I don't tend to read too deep into a lot of things like, like what's going on in France. So I did a cursory look of what's going on. I watched the video. Apparently this uh, young man, I think he was 17 was pulled over uh, for traffic citation or, or something like that. And I can't remember exactly. And then they come up to his car and some, some altercation happens. Something's going on. The guy starts driving away and the cop reaches in and shoots him as he's driving away. Of course, it's on video. Uh, the cop. Excessive. Excessive. Yeah, and the cop, the cop's already being charged with a homicide, I believe. It, yeah. This is, this is already running through the, their judicial, however their judicial sure. process is. As has been the case here in America, in, in most of the cases, is these people are going to go to jail. And, and sometimes there's mitigating situations. You don't know what's going on. You don't see every angle. So you don't know everything that's that's going on when we all get to judge these things in the 15 second, second clip that someone took on their iPhone, you know, holding the phone up like this from 50 yards away, to be fair. But the country sure. came unglued. Yeah. And well, they're burning. They're, they're yeah. burning things down. Well, the next Frenchman you run into, ask him this question. You always are so high and mighty bringing up the point that you invented democracy. Why don't you let it run its course? Why are you freaking out? But that, I mean, that's besides the point. I, it, 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 that's a lesson to be learned, I think, in a lot of these situations. Let the process happen. I, we just jump to these conclusions. Yeah, Once again, it's everywhere people, in the world, they, it's the media grabbing at straws, taking stuff, woodling into a ball, and advancing their bot paid and sold for agenda from the politicians that's how the world works now no fair media except for you jeff obviously and the great people over at 97 one i i'm done like I, I turn on network news and this is the first thing you see and and the report itself looks like it has been pasted together by a 13 year old high school kid no Probably. facts <laughs> no no facts yeah. all opinion and parroted information, most parroted yeah. AP information, the laziest reporting you can do. Journalism is dead in this country. Wake up, well, in that country apparently too. Yeah, the, around you, the world, around the journalism world. Journalism. Well, like I said, they they dead. showed. Now there are things burning down there, from what I can see. Obviously, oh, yeah. from the, thousands of buildings have been torched, businesses, homes, vehicles. The numbers are, are truly astounding. It's crazy. Uh, I think the numbers we're getting up to in dollar figures or uh, euro figures or whatever, uh, the whole uh, uh, Black Lives Matter uh, riots and, and looting that happened here in, in America. But that was over like a whole summer sure. period. That was a long period. Yeah. This has exploded. It's, it's spilled over to a, a couple other European countries, but not to the same sure. extent from, from what I'm reading. But... Th- People are on edge around the world. This just goes to show you that's what's happened here is happening sure. all over. Now, in fairness, France has a long history of of riots and protesting. And, I mean, you can go back to the storming of the Bastille. Sure. And, I mean, this yeah, has been going on for it. They yeah, it this has gone on for a long time. But France has a heck of a problem with – this person happened to be – of North African descent, I think Algeria, perhaps Morocco, Remember, probably Morocco, descent, something or, like that. Or Algerian, yep. um, France has a huge problem, as do many European countries, and America is developing this problem of immigrants not um, assimilating sure. into the society, sure. and they're living in areas that are it's like a separate country within a country. Yep. And it's it's not a good thing, and I don't want that to happen here well, either. It's it it is, um, and it's because of failed state governments and and monarchies across the globe that love taking all of their problems and shoving it upon the world powers or the people that do things in a democratic or more importantly republic state. Um, ours is with Mexico and and South America. Hey, take all your people that we don't want and are an economic drain on us, and let's send them to the United States. They'll take care of it. the taxpayer. Will take care of it. That's unfair to us. Um, and I, I get the whole open border idea. Okay. I always just make the point. I can't go to Mexico and just live and hang out. 
Open I'd borders be, don't work when you have a social nope. welfare state, though, because nope. people are going to flock well, to it. Morocco, Algeria, their immigration problem is almost identical, if not worse, to what we have going on here. Mm-hmm. It's the same basic construct. You have dictators or monarchies or failed government, basically just communists, that get rid of their undesirables in a different way. Because you, you have CNN now. They'd be there with a camera, so you can't just shoot them in the head in a ditch. It, you it, have to send them away. It, it used to be they would round people up. Yeah. There was different stuff going on, so now they push let's, them to the next let's border. Let's send them up to Siberia for the rest of their life so they can either starve or freeze to death. That's how it used to be done. Now it's let's just displace them and funnel them into a different society that will have a, a liberal attitude, take them in at the burden of their own population, and it's fine. There's a problem there. And as a lot of people are pushing up through, especially sub-Saharan Africa, sure. uh, because of it's just jacked up. You've got dictatorships. Sure. You've got so we, many problems down there. So they're, they're looking, hey, go to Morocco, go to Egypt, go to... We have talked about this, uh, relocating across the globe. Yeah. If you could go somewhere, where would you go? Right? Uh, not France. Well, no. <laughs> but I mean, just any place on the planet. You pick it, put a pin in it on a map, 100% guaranteed you would not be able to go and just walk in and just stay forever yeah. and receive benefits. Nowhere else on the planet. Name it. Nowhere. Not even France allows that to the extent the United States does. Yeah. But this is a global immigrant. This is all planned by the powers that be that think that they control the planet. This has been going on for 10 years. There's a great video on YouTube. I forget his name. I'll have to look it up for you so we can put it on maybe the website. But he does a uh, demonstration with uh, marbles in glass jars mm-hmm. as far as this lie that we're told that everybody needs a better chance and a better opportunity. So they all need to immigrate to these wonderful countries because their own country doesn't help. Well, here's the big problem. When you take the best and brightest from these societies and ship them off to one place, what happens to the place they left? Yeah, brain drain. Exactly. Talent you're just, drain. You're even everything. worse yeah. off. You yeah. don't have nobody with ideas, no work. It's just, it's. Well, it, that's it, why so many people in this country, we're all here fighting. There's some plenty of people who say, hey, I'm moving out of the country. I'm, I'm giving up my citizenship. I'm doing sure. this. I'm doing that. Well, good luck with that. I mean, you can buy citizenship in many countries. Uh, buy. You, There's you, the key. Yeah, you can they literally buy. They offset the cost to their government and their, more importantly, their citizenry by a, a fee. Yeah. Do we charge that? No. You no. have to go through the legal process to do it. But, there's but I'm always no a little skeptical cash. of buying a for like a half million dollars, you're buying a, a citizenship. You know, I know a few people that have done it in Costa take, Rica, and they, yeah, they freaking love it. They They're love just it, like, yeah. you got to do this. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, we'll it gets see. a little costly. We're coming up on 20 years of just wireless here, so we'll see what yeah. happens. You know? I'm, I'm not getting I, any younger, Jeff. I, I, I hear you. I, I think about that all the time. You're like, Oof, rental properties, shows, and this and that. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we do it because we I, love it. I, I love flag too much. I couldn't yeah. do it. I just know that I'd be miserable if well, I Well, and there's – I mean, it's worth fighting for. It and, is. You know, on the, on the day after Independence Day, it's, it's it was worth fighting for then. It's been worth fighting for for yeah. centuries, and it continues to be. This continues to be the place uh, to go to. Those folks that are going up through North, through Africa and North Africa and trying to get into France or wherever – if you if you gave them a choice, they'd probably prefer to come on over here. Of course, if they could get over, and some do. Some yeah. actually go through hey, South America hey, and go all is, the way up this through. This is where this conversation always gets just just out of hand. It's not practical. Where if somebody comes to this country, my my girlfriend in high school's dad crossed the border illegally when he was nine years old mm-hmm. by himself. Hmm. The man started a painting company in Oakland and out in Alameda. He is more successful than he could have ever dreamed. He is the American dream. I have no problem with that story. And I don't think 99.9% of Americans do. But when you come here and you commit crimes and you start gangs or you do nefarious things, you're not welcome. But no one is. No one should yeah. be. That they, they, they think that it's a racial thing. And it's like... It's a rule of law thing. Why are you such an idiot? Yeah. We're not even talking about that. Or if you come here and expect to be taken you, you care could, of. You could be from Antarctica with the penguins and come here illegally <laughs> and you murder somebody. You're a murderer. We're not just going to ship you back to the penguins and be like, ah, 
uh, we're not going to we're going to forget about it. But that's what we're doing sometimes with immigration right yeah. now from no, our it's southern a, border. It's, it's a, insane. It's a huge problem. And, you know, I, I want to hit on one more thing here on this one. Um, I had this in my notes that cons- this, this separation that's happening in America, America is separate segregating. So we were talking about how France has segregation when it comes to uh, mostly Muslim in- immigrants that are that are coming in and I actually broke down in outside of Paris once in a rental car in uh, neighborhood I bet you that was it. that was lovely the I tourist bet. police actually came and helped us out they were there like I'll give them credit they actually have tourist police they showed up the car broke like 10 10 miles or kilometer equivalent whatever after we had rented it it was like a new car and uh, the to- we were broken down for a few minutes like under an uh, overpass where the lane was going down there's a little shoulder and the tourist police came and they were the nicest people they they actually we got a ride in the squad car Whoa. to um they didn't take us to the police we we wound up going to the airport back they brought us back so it was it was sure. kind of cool that they had that and that they were um very, I will say they were because the French often get the short end of it, as sure. you, you've heard over the years. And oh, yeah. My experience was very, very, very nice when we were over there. But anyway, side story. Um, people are segregating in the U.S. I see more and more reports. The numbers are astounding of conservatives moving to the red states, liberals moving to the blue states. There is a mass self segregation going on in this sure. country right now. Good thing or bad thing? Horrible thing. I, the One of the greatest things that socialist Marxists love to, to try and do is tribalize society because it's easier to deal with factions and, and more, more importantly, play them off each other, make them villains for their own purposes, uh, expel them. It's, it's all in the playbook. Read, read Marx. If you haven't, if you're somebody out there searching, listening to the show because you want a different perspective, I hope you are. That's why Jeff does this, in my opinion. I, I, I can feel it. That's why he wants to start and ignite conversations on a better level. Read your read this trash because it's trash. It's the worst ever printed document is Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto, in my opinion, in the world. Uh, 65 million deaths to show for it. So um, At least. Yeah, and, and that's being very, very nice about the number. Um, these people are bad, and it's happening in America. They're doing it. The media is doing it. It's, it's taking shape and form every month. I see more and more. So I've been trying to sound the alarm for the last 10 years about this, that they're here. And they want to take the country over. It's not a joke. It's not some concocted conspiracy theory from the right or the conservatives. The proof's in the pudding. We got cocaine in the White House and a bunch of Marxists. <laughs> Merry, Merry Fourth of July, uh, The America. cocaine thing is unreal, and they're trying to dim the sun. Uh, on, the, on the segregation thing, as far as conservatives, Republican, um, it's conservatives and liberals, part of me is like, I, I get it, because – you just get so fed up with it, and you just want to be around people that sure. you, you want to yeah. are are kind of same philosophical leanings and this and that. But then it doesn't challenge anything anymore, and then it, it just that, Jeff, what's the is, next road when you're divided like this? That? Is like switching churches. Oh, the, there's a group or the pastor. We're just gonna go find a new church. You, you you gotta sometimes hold your ground. I won't move from Flagstaff unless I am forced. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with probably a lot of people's views politically in this town necessarily. I think you and I are kind of in the minority of that. But I'd say, yeah. I think that we can all get along with different ideas on how to handle things. Just we got to stop with the extremes. Yeah. We got to just, yeah, it's, it's, it's been trending. a problem now yeah, for 25 it's years. Trending just, towards that, and the data is yeah. showing that. But. Things hit a critical mass sometimes and, and change. And you, you can't go back. You, can you can't yeah. roll the clock back. It's, yeah. it's at the precipice and you're done. All right. Your thoughts. Love to hear from you. Go ahead and, go ahead and send me an email and want to share those comments uh, at this point on tomorrow's show. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Back in just a minute. Zach's got some uh, big news he wants to share. You're listening to The Jeff Orvid Show. All right, Zach Elman's here with me, and always love hearing from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. A shout-out to Crazy Country Boys Services right there off Empire Avenue in East Flagstaff. They recharged Isabel's 
what is that thing, a 96 Isuzu Rodeo. something. Rodeo, yes, thank you. And the AC, and it's cold now. After, really? After four Good years of dealing with uh, the heat, uh, they did it. They fixed it, and thank you for that. So check out Crazy Country Boy Services. They did a great job for me on that one, especially with the heat that's going on right now. All right, you've got some good stuff going on at the East Flag Just Wireless location. Um, this Is it all of July? Uh, all of July. We are. I mean, I am clearing some inventory. Okay. Clearing some phones. We just had a huge price drop on all iPhone repairs and a couple Samsungs, believe it or not. Those are the expensive ones, and they've even come down a little bit. How refreshing is it to say that a business is going to lower some prices moving forward? This is unusual. I know. I stop the presses, <laughs> as they say. I run a business that's for the people, and it's for the people of Flagstaff. I, I don't like to play these games. I think there's a lot of what I have termed and a lot of other people got actually stole this from the Wall Street Journal. Greedflation. I am not going to gouge you. I'm still the same margin, the same stuff that I was doing in 18 when we were in a great economic time compared to now. Yeah. Because people need it. You can't go without your cell phone. I get it. I understand. It's your lifeline to the world. Uh, it's sad that we're so connected we'll debate, to these we'll devices. Later, well, we've I spent know. plenty of time. I, I, I can't function without it, though. I sometimes feel like I'm creating the <laughs> Matrix, like I'm, you know, uh, with Agent Smith, and I'm doing too much <laughs> bad, and I need to maybe revert and wake up and, and, and expose the Matrix for what it is, but... You should bring I, back beepers, Zach. I would love to. You know, just Man, like, they were easy to voicemail sell. Voicemail and, okay, day. I'll get back to you as soon as I can find a pay phone. Well, remember you the know, A little more patience, I mean, man. I, I would love to see just encrypted <sighs> yeah, yeah, backwards yeah. numbers in the, as in a the message. seven instead. digits that you got to do or whatever. <laughs> okay, so a lot of great sales uh, on the smartphones going Phones, on right now. Repairs, repairs accessories, accessories. Pretty much everything. Go see us at the east side. We're Check. blowing it out at right that across location. The, right across from the Flagstaff Mall there. Right next to the new Chipotle, Dunkin' Donuts, the DMV. It's all right there. Easy you to do. Get that's to. like the circle of life. Get your phone, get your driver's license. You get, get donut, a donut and burrito. some kind of burrito. <laughs> yeah, and then come see. So good. Get your license renewed and then come see your uh, cell phone dealer. Yeah. All right. Well, stop on by there, folks. And I, I got it because my phone is just cracked it to have. So, Zach, it's always fun. Um, good news on the patriotism. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. When it comes out and it's streaming, let me know what you think of the new Indiana Jones. I will. It was we should a do fun a movie two read. hours and 30 minutes. You know what? I'll, as soon as it's out on Amazon, I'll watch it. We'll do a movie yeah, review. If you didn't like other Indiana Jones, you're not going to like this one. The first three but if, are the best Yeah, ever. if you like those three, I think you're okay with this one. I'm so, holding you to this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get what you pay for. <laughs> Everybody have a great, safe night. Take care. See you soon.